What's going on guys? Welcome to another tutorial on Adobe Premiere Pro CC. Right over here we have Premiere Pro open. If you notice some differences from my previous tutorials, that's right, I am using a Mac computer. I switched from Windows to a Mac. I think it's been a great switch. So if you're thinking about doing something like that, I think it's a great idea because for myself, I found that Windows just got in the way of the work a little bit too much. But anyways, let's go over here to File New and we're gonna select Project. Now some of the things you might be familiar with Premiere Pro, but a lot of people post on this channel comments that they're getting confused with CC. So let's see if I can clear this up for you guys. Right over here is pretty much similar where you're just gonna create a name for your project if you want to. And over here we have some scratch disk. I always recommend having a scratch disk folder away from the application's installation folder. But basically just create another drive where you can have the folder and temporary files away from the applications. I just find that the applications work a lot better when you do this. So all the same folder and all the same location for the temporary files. So over here in general you can see that we have audio video and this is the way the video and audio is displayed when you're working with Premiere Pro. And this is what a project looks like when you create a new project at Premiere Pro. The one difference though in recent versions of Premiere Pro is that you have to go file, new, and sequence. And a sequence is just like a sequence of events. It stores all the video and audio and images, and that's where your timeline is and all that kind of stuff. Now over here we have the presets. The presets have to do with the way you record your video. For example, I have a DSLR, so I would select digital SLR. And over here we have options for how it's recorded. 24 or 50 frames per second, 60 frames per second. And a good idea for people who are recording video, especially with their own camera, is that you have to really research on the way it records. And then once you know that, that, you'll just check out the presets over here that match the way you record your video. Also, if you want to have a custom project, a lot of people on this channel ask me about how to customize the settings for Premiere Pro. Click Settings, and then right over here, we can select Custom. And then you can start changing things like the resolution, the frame rate, the way the audio is set here, even the sample rate for the audio. A lot of different customizations you can make for your project. Once you do all that, you can also name the sequence. And then select OK. But for now, I already have templates that I use for myself that I created. So I'm gonna go File, Open Project, and I'm gonna select Adobe Z2. And this is what my project looks like. This is an outro that I created with After Effects, also some Photoshop stuff, and importing into Premiere Pro. This is what it looks like as a video. If you wanna import a file, you just go File, and then select Import. And that's still the same way that it is before. Over here, we have the Project Panel open. If you wanna open that window, you're gonna go Window and select Project. Another cool feature in Premiere Pro, especially with the Windows folder, is that you have a folder here. You can actually store the things that you import, so it just makes it easier organizing that. So I can put the video file over here, right in the folder. Another thing you can do is you can actually preview these videos in the panel right here. So if I press spacebar, it's gonna play the video. Press spacebar again, I can stop that, and I can also scrub here and see what this video is about. So that's a really cool feature. You also have a media browser. Media browser allows you to access the different drives on your computer and you can find more content for your projects. And over here we have the tools that you can use and I have another tutorial where I explain all these kind of tools that you can use for your project. But some simple stuff here is if we zoom in, which you can do right here, press C on your keyboard, you can cut the video. And it's not really cutting the video because you press V on your keyboard and you can select that and move the video the video is actually there. So it's just a way to hide it. That's the way I best describe you know, the video in Premiere Pro. When you start making edits, it's really just hiding the video. That confuses some people. Really just gonna press Control Z, Control Z, and Control Z again, or Option Z on your keyboard, and you can do that, and you can just go back to the way the video is supposed to be. If you wanna shorten the video, you can do that, and you see the video is shorn, Control Z, and the video is back there. And you can also just left click and hold the end of the video and do that. Very simple stuff. Over here we have an audio track. I select M for mute so you don't hear the audio because that would be a little bit annoying in this video. I have a simple fade in right here and to do that, again I have another tutorial about that. If you want to select the track, left click it, select the keyframe here, scrub on the timeline, left click another keyframe and that's a simple fade in. And you can see here you can adjust the fade in. I'm just gonna hide this top layer right there. You see the video was over here and then we can show the video again. So this video layer here, and then this video is on top of that layer. So that's how it works with the way you want to present your project. Here's the little dancing Android guy. <laughs> and the reason why I'm showing this guy is because, you know, some people, they might think this was all in After Effects. Not necessarily, because what happened was I animated this guy like this, this Android figure. But right here, we have a second copy of the same animation. The only difference is, is if I right click on this and select speed duration, you're going to see I increase the speed and I have a reverse speed. So that's all it is. He's going one direction here and then he just goes in the opposite direction. It's that simple. And if I select this and I go to effects controls, 
you can see some of what's going on because I also animated the position. And animating things in Premiere Pro is really simple. I know a lot of people ask me about animating text and video and all that kind of stuff, but I would say if you want to do some advanced animating, you want to use a program like After Effects. If you want to do some simple animation with Premiere Pro, then yeah, this is a good program to use. And that's the best way I can describe what you want to do with Premiere Pro. And just for example, say I want to add another keyframe for the position. You could just start moving the guy around if you wanted to. And yeah, that will move him over there in that direction if I wanted to do that. But I'm going to press Command-Z and then just reverse it to the way it was. And also I want to show you guys this effects panel. If you want to add an effect to the video, we can do that. I'm going to left click the effect and then I'm going to add it to the video on the timeline. And right there, the video spins into the frame. It's a very simple effect. And if you want to edit that, you can do that. You don't really have to keep the effect the way it is. By default, all you have to do is zoom in here on the timeline, select where the effect is, and you can make the adjustments over here. And this is in the effects controls panel. You just go here, window, and you can select effect controls. We have a zoom. Let's see what this looks like. And that's really fast. So if you want to slow that down, again, just double click that. And you can start editing the effect right here. And that looks pretty cool also. Anyways, I want to show you guys something with the text. Go File, select New Title. And then you see here, these are different options. I have another tutorial about all the text options you can use. Default still is when the text is just going to be there. You can animate yourself if you want to. Default roll is just like movie credits. And default crawl is when the text goes left to right or right to left on the video. So basically what I would do here for a simple text addition to the video, select Default Still, type Adobe Easy. I could type Adobe Easy again. And so many people ask me about these text options. Now this is a little bit boring, so let's select something different here. Now the reason why I'm even talking about this is because when people ask me about the text options in Premiere Pro, they're asking me how to do additional edits, you know, to animating, you know, like keyframes per letter and all that kind of stuff. You have to use something again like After Effects because the reason they have it like that is because Adobe wants people who are editing video, I guess simple edits or even simple edits to text using this program. But if you want to do something more advanced, After Effects is the program where you can do that. And I have tutorials about that, whether it be 3D text, all sorts of stuff. And actually I'll probably do more tutorials with After Effects so you guys can get a better idea of what it's like using an application like that. Because Premiere Pro is awesome, but again, if you want to get involved in some advanced video editing, I'm talking about effects and stuff you could do with individual letters and all that kind of stuff with text, you want to check out After Effects. And that's the truth about it. But besides that, Premiere Pro does have some cool features because over here, here you can adjust the gradient. You can change the way the text looks. Numerous options here, changing the fonts, the style, you know, all sorts of things you can do. So I would recommend if you're doing some simple edits, this is a good program to use. And if we want to add the text, we're just gonna go to the project panel here, left click on it. And if you just want the text to appear there, you can leave it like that. And by the way, that's not the same way as rate stretch. Right over here, we have the rate stretch tool. If you click on this and you can send the video, it's important to know that because when you're selecting the selection tool by pressing V on your keyboard, all you're doing is extending this. Now for text, you can extend this as long as you want. With the rate stretch, it changes the frame rate. So that's something you should know about when using the rate stretch tool. Other than that, this is another tool you can zoom in, zoom out, press all on your keyboard and you can zoom out. And that's really helpful when you want to work with the timeline here, especially when you're editing audio in Premiere Pro, you want to actually be able to view the audio. Say you want to export a frame, very simple to do right here. Select this export frame option, left click on it and select the format you want and then change the name to what you want it to be. And then also you could change the location where you want to save it. Another thing that people have been asking me, just one more thing about the effects controls panel. A lot of people have been asking me about these options when you want to mask something in Premiere Pro. This is something new with Premiere Pro CC. If you don't have this option in Premiere Pro CC, I just recommend uninstalling the program, reinstalling it. And if you still have issues where you don't have this feature, then contact Adobe or use their cleanup script because it's another way where you could do a clean install. Just remove the application and then reinstall it. If you have previous versions of Premiere Pro, they don't have this option. So that's something to think Think about when you want to update your version of Premiere Pro, whether it's worth it to upgrade. I think it really is because Adobe keeps updating the applications and they do a great job. Over here we have the Adobe
Adobe Mixer. Now again with audio editing, I use Adobe Audition and with some audio editing, I will use, you know, a program like Premiere Pro if I'm doing some simple audio edits. But again, I recommend you use a program like Adobe Audition if you're very serious about mixing audio or trying to get a real good idea of how you should be recording your audio, that kind of thing because Premiere Pro is really for just basic audio edits. I know we have some features here where you go window and select effects, and if we select the audio track here, I can start adding some effects here. But these are very basic things, especially compared to a program like Audition. So if you're really serious about editing audio, Adobe Audition is the program that you would want to use. And if you right click on the audio, if I want to do that, it's very simple to do. I could just go right over here and select edit clip in Adobe Audition. And then once I save that clip in Audition, it will update in Premiere Pro. So that's pretty cool that you can do that. And over here with the video, you can also replace it with an After Effects composition. So if you want to work with After Effects and Premiere Pro at the same time, this is a really cool thing that you can do. And that feature has been around for a few variations of Premiere Pro CC. And I'm going to show you guys some preferences here. We're going to go Premiere Pro, select preferences, and I'm going to select memory. This is something that people should be familiar with. If you're not, this is all about how your program is going to work. Right here, I have 11 gigabytes for Premiere Pro. If I wanted more, I can adjust this. I have five gigabytes for the other programs. And the reason why this matters so much is because programs like Premiere Pro and After Effects, even Photoshop, you really need a good amount of memory because you're gonna be opening a lot of files, you're working with a lot of media, and that's what's really one of the most important things. Yes, you wanna have something like quad-core processing because that's gonna allow you to utilize the Mercury Playback Engine and have a really good experience with Premiere Pro or even After Effects, but in a situation like this, you know that you need RAM. I mean, like most people know this when you're using a computer, but if you're not familiar with that, you really want to have a good amount of RAM when you're using a program even like Premiere Pro. I notice a lot of people also ask me on this channel about, you know, lag in Premiere Pro and that kind of thing, and they're interested in how you could better the experience. One way you can enhance that experience, I would say, is right over here, you can actually lower the way this looks like like when you're previewing your video. So in this preview panel here, this is not necessarily the way it's going to render because you can select right here a quarter and it's just going to lower the quality of the preview. So your computer it might not be able to handle Premiere Pro. Try using that in the preview window if you're experiencing some lag with the preview. If there's anything more going on with your program where it's not working correctly, you want to really check your RAM and also the processors that you're using with your computer and of course the speed of your computer. There's a lot of different factors that contribute to the way an application like Premiere Pro is working, but those are a few things that you might want to look at. Another Another thing that we might want to look at also, of course, is how to render your video. So I don't know if you guys know this, but if you select I or O on your keyboard, that is where the in or out of the actual video that you're going to render. So I for the in point, and I'm click over there and select O for that point. And that's the area that would render. And you can also adjust it like this. And then what happens is we go to file and select export and select media. And we have different options here. Again, this is similar to other versions of Premiere Pro, but if you're not familiar with it, all you're gonna do is select where you wanna save your project. And then right over here, we have different formats. I select QuickTime because when I wanna publish a video to YouTube, I use QuickTime. And you can see here the Kodak is H.264. And then once you do that, you can select export. And that's pretty much what I want to show in this intro tutorial to Adobe Premiere Pro CC. Of course, give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. I will see you guys later. Peace out.